our job in general at the Future Lab is to look decades out and to see and to understand what's happening, particularly in urban environments and how that changes mobility. How are people moving around? How are they going to move around in the future? Figure out those trends, figure out what's real and what's not, and then start to help advise Nissan as a company to sort of build mobility around those needs in the future. This is the Nissan new mobility concept. Uh, it's in sort of a line of thinking that we have, we refer to as micro-mobility. It's a, as you can tell, a really small, all electric vehicle that's uh, basically a little bit bigger and more enclosed than say a scooter or a motorcycle, but also clearly smaller than any other car on the road. Um, so great for really urban environments like New York. Uh, there's quite a few of them on the road in San Francisco right now, uh, but are built around this idea of how do you move inside of dense urban environments. This car goes 25 miles per hour. Uh, it's great for most urban trips because most urban trips are less than 20 miles per hour and so it perfectly navigates inside of cities. It's all electric so it's clean. It's, it doesn't have any noise so it's really nice for urban environments. Uh, and while, where permitted, it actually has the ability to park perpendicular to the curb. So it can, it can actually park in between other parallel spots. You can fit about three of these inside a normal parallel parking spot. And so when you look at a city like San Francisco or New York and you understand how uh, expensive and difficult parking can be, taking one of these and being able to put it in between existing parking spots makes it really advantageous. What's really amazing, you know, we're standing in New York City, which is the only technical mega city in the United States. There's over 10 million people in the city. Uh, obviously, lots of congestion, lots of people, lots of people with needs of moving around. But as more and more people move into urban environments, which you can look at all of the statistics and you know that a few years ago, for the first time ever, more people live in urban environments than in rural environments. And that is only increasing. It's expected by, in the next 20 years or so, about 20 more mega cities will come on. So cities more than 10 million people in population will come on. Well, the reality is, uh, as much as we love them and how perfect some of these cars are for other environments, a lot of the larger cars that have been built for suburban and rural environments are just too big for the city. And so more and more people are looking for smaller types of vehicles. But not everybody wants to be on two wheels. People feel unsafe sometimes, and so putting them on four wheels or giving them an enclosure just gives one more type of vehicle for somebody to navigate the streets of New York and to do so all electric, clean, noiseless, all of those things, and to gain all those benefits of being on a park. It's small, it's relatively inexpensive, all of those things. More than any other car I've been in or behind the wheel of, this car gets reaction. It might be the open windows, it might be just the way it looks, but you drive this car for five minutes in any environment, I guarantee you people are going to ask you about it, they're going to talk to you, they start smiling immediately. Kids absolutely go nuts for this vehicle. Um, it, there's something about it that elicits like this sort of childlike wonder, like why does this this looks out of place, but yet it still works. Uh, and you get everything from school children to construction workers here on the streets of Manhattan talking to you, wanting to see how much it would cost, how can they get one, can they drive it, can they get in the back seat, all those things. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you want to be in a good mood, drive this vehicle around for five minutes in any city and you'll get in a good mood real quick. So in San Francisco, these vehicles are uh, not just concepts, they're actually for rent through a partnership that we have with a startup called Scoot Networks, uh, which is, had started as a scooter sharing service, uh, but now has expanded to four wheels and they have a lot of interest in sort of really micro-mobility and how people share micro-mobility around, uh, around urban environments. And so you can rent this car for $6 a, a half hour in San Francisco, drive it pretty much anywhere in San Francisco, and uh, honestly, uh, unlike other forms of trans, you know, transportation, it feels like you're playing in the city. And so it really has this sort of playful, fun uh, feel that normal people, not just Nissan employees, can get in behind the wheel of and drive around. And it's been a wonderful opportunity for us to learn and work with a startup, figure out what that's like as a big company like Nissan to actually work with startups. Uh, what are their needs? How do they work? How can we learn to work, you know, work more like them in a lot of ways? And how can we power uh, new innovative startups to do, do interesting things, especially with our vehicles, which makes it even inter more interesting because there are new ways for us to apply the technology that we built, you know, as a company. My background is in uh, is in urbanism, and my, what surprised me so much about this is how. Uh, even in a city like San Francisco that has all kinds of transportation options, you can take public transit, you can, take, you can bike, you can walk, you can take your own car, there is still this very uh, maybe American feel of wanting to drive and wanting to have fun while you're doing it. And just the amount of joy that people get from this 
And it doesn't serve all of their transportation needs. Sometimes they still take transit. Sometimes they take Uber, for example. But when they do drive and when that fits their need, they want it to be fun. And this car fits the bill completely.